Julie here for Cherry on Top and today we're doing mixed media mix up volume three and we're gonna work with texture paste today. So I have my art journal and I've gessoed a couple pages and for texture paste, you need a texture paste. You need um, um, something to apply it. So there's a silicone wedge, some palette knives. You can also use like an old credit card or gift card. Those are texture tools I picked up. Those are fun. And then stencils. Stencils are the most fun way to apply texture paste. You could also do it freehand, which I actually, a few videos back, did make some clouds freehand. So, but, but stencils are the best way. So the first one we're going to work with here is called texture sand paste. And it's very gritty. Um, if I had the volume on my video, you could hear it going on. Um, it's kind of a gray tint to it. I'm not gonna lie, this wasn't my favorite one. But if you were doing like a beach page or something, or you wanted a really grungy look, it could work. So there I just used some Nouveau Shimmer Powder and I put it over the wet texture paste. I'm gonna let it dry. We'll, we'll come back to that later. I'm using some of these texture tools um, for those, you kind of have to apply the texture paste pretty thick so it has a way to rake through. So this is my favorite texture paste. It's Ranger Opaque Matte Texture Paste. And this is my new Tim Holtz stencil and it is so pretty, you guys. So I'm just holding the stencil still and putting paste over it. It's super simple. Now I will say texture paste can get messy, but keep it in your contained space immediately clean your stencil and your palette knife or whatever you're using to apply it um, as soon as you are done and you'll be fine so i've left the stencil over that section and you'll see why here in a second i'm building up the texture paste here because i want to use those texture tools and like i said you need a little bit of height there to make them be able to rake through and make the design um, you could probably do some really fun things with this. Um, not my cup of tea. I prefer the stencil look. So now while the stencil is still on the wet texture paste, I'm going to apply some of that powder ink. It is, um, Prima Trianon Patina and it's really pretty. So, um, pulled that up while that side dries, we're going to work on the other side. So first we're going to go with this Nouveau. Um, let's see, sorry, I'm looking for it. Numo Glacier Paste. Nouveau Glacier Paste. And it's really glittery and gorgeous. Now I will say, as much mess as glitter makes, it pretty much makes that mess. Um, but it's super pretty. <laughs> and so next we're gonna go with this um, Prima Icing Paste. And it's in a gold color. And it's it's like icing, it really is. It's, it's kind of like shimmery, not so much as glittery. It's more of a shimmer plasticky feeling, textured, metallic. It was pretty sticky, pretty messy. Um, but it, 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 and I think a little bit would go a long way with this because it has a very bold look to it. Next, we're gonna try Nouveau Glimmer Paste. And this is in black and it looks navy blue. And I was like, huh, are we sure this is right? But it dries black. In the case, it looks navy blue, but it does dry black. It's the very similar to the Glacier Paste. It, as in it has the, the sticky factor, it has glitter, it's kind of a messy cleanup. After these, I did have to go to the sink and clean my stencils rather than just use a baby wipe. Not to mention that this was the start of all this like COVID stuff and I was like, ooh, should I be using this many baby wipes? <laughs> so there we have it. But um, yeah, I'm kind of showing you that it was a lot. So next I'm gonna try applying my color to the page first and then applying texture paste on top. That is a distress spray that I put up there. Super pigmented, right? So you'll see later, it actually absorbed the color into the texture paste when I applied it over dried distress spray. So I did another spray down there and I let those dry and now I'm going to go back and I the idea was to let there be like a white paste over the color but like i said um especially with the distress one because it's a distress oxide the texture paste ends up absorbing the pigment but if you used a different color like a water color or something like that i don't think that the texture paste would absorb the color as much um, but I like the way it looked. It looks, it still looks really cool. So it's white there, but when it dries, you'll see. 
it kind of absorbs it. And so that, I'm gonna do the sand texture paste again over the orange. And eh, like I said, it's just not my favorite. It's kind of dingy if you're looking for that grungy look. But anyway, right there, I'm showing you how, once you pull up the stencil, if you want kind of like to soften the edges, you just kind of smudge down the texture paste. So now we're back on the other page. It's all dried. And where I added that Prima paste, I'm, it, it didn't like spread really well. Um, not the paste, the pigment ink. Um, I'm going to spray it and it's kind of like a watercolor and I do like it. It's really pretty, it's shimmery, really pretty. Um, it was just like a lot, a concentrated amount, maybe like use less. So uh, what are we doing here? Oh, I did some just regular spray, like spray watercolor there, and that looks really pretty. Let it run in all the crevices of the um, stenciled texture paste, and that's super pretty. That, you can also, that's the sand paste that I use. Again, I just don't love it. It, it looks dirty, but you can see over there on the orange where I applied it, it did kind of keep its white texture over the top of the color. It didn't absorb the pigment. Um, for that one and then now I'm using alcohol inks on that opaque um, texture paste and it has a cool look um, it's very pigmented um, and then it's the opaque it's uh, a matte texture paste so it doesn't have any shine to it at all so now we're gonna go and just try a few more techniques I'm looking for my my gessoed page and um, let's see what do we do first here Oh, okay, we're gonna use that pigment powder to make the texture paste a color. So I put some on my mat, and then I put the texture paste over the top and I mix it in. And this is probably my one of my favorites. It's super pretty, and I use that pretty Tim Holtz stencil, and it just looks so pretty. Because of the matte texture, it almost looks like a velvet, um, or a, what do you call it, flocking? Like when you emboss, emboss with flocking, that's kind of what it reminded me of. It's super pretty. Um, so there's that, super pretty, right? So next we're gonna tint, oh no, I'm gonna apply it as a watercolor. So you can use, the, this powder is fun. You can use it in a bunch of different ways. And so I mix it with water and I just apply it down onto the page as a watercolor. And then I'm gonna come back over and put um, some texture paste on top of it to use as another example. <clears throat> so now I'm showing you um, powdered inks and these are, what are these called? I forget what they're called. Sorry. What are these called? These are called brush -o colors and they're super pigmented watercolor powders and they are so fun over texture paste. So what I'm doing here is I'm applying a lot of that matte texture paste. And while this stencil is still down, I'm gonna sprinkle these powders over the texture paste. And these are fun with or without because they have different colored powders in them. So what happens when you sprinkle it over the texture paste is it isolates the colors a little bit. And so, if you don't spray it with water, it doesn't blend. And so you get this really cool pixelated look. And so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get this little clumps to spread out. And I try blowing it with my um, heat tool. And what I end up doing is grabbing a dry paintbrush and kind of spreading it around. And then you'll see the texture paste kind of absorbs it and it starts um, spreading and it looks really cool when you get the up close looks it's like pixelated color so I start to wipe it off and then you can see how pigmented it is right and I'm like oh this could be a cool stencil so if I had spritzed it with water it would have worked better but it's a little wet so I try to like use it as like a, a stamp almost um, and it did put some there if I'd spritzed it with water that would have been really cool but you can see my hand there it's super messy but it's one of my favorites. I love it so much. So next I'm going in over that um, watercolor that I applied and I'm using glass bead glitter gel from Faber Castell. Um, and I think mine's dried out a little bit. Um, it, you can see it's really hard to apply, but it does dry really pretty. And it's just like a it's opaque, I'm sorry, it's not opaque, translucent. It's translucent glitter gel. Um, it draws really pretty and you'll see a close-up here in a minute and then next i'm putting over that a ranger crazing and it's like um it does like a little crackled look 
So here's a close up of some of these. That is the one with the Prima color and you can see, you can see the individual little pigments in there, super fun. There's that one where we applied the powder inks over. I love how it's the pixelated look. That one's really pretty. You can get so many great looks from texture paste. So now we're gonna dive into using one of these techniques on a layout. So I'm gonna use this Pink Fresh Studio paper that I've been hoarding uh, to do a page for my son playing the guitar. So I'm gonna gesso up this grid paper with my favorite clear gesso. And I'm gonna, the technique I'm using today is I'm gonna use the, the opaque matte Ranger texture paste and I'm gonna use the um, ink powders over the top. I love that pigmented look. I and you can and actually this is a really great example of different ways that you're gonna achieve a look with this because um, I get to the point where I'm not cleaning my stencil and so it mixes the color really pigmented with the pigment. So we'll have the isolated the isolated little bits of ink and then we'll get to the point where we have really pigmented green stars because um, you got to wash these stencils in a sink and using a baby wipe see all that green like it's so heavy with color so but it's cool I like the way it ended up so I just don't I like that but I can't leave it just like a regular rectangle so I'm gonna make it like a more blobby organic shape right so I'm um, adding more texture paste and then I while the stencil is still on I sprinkle the the ink over it and so down here is where you'll see because I didn't clean that stencil it starts really mixing in the pigment with the texture paste but I like the way that looks so it's okay there I used a clean part of the stencil so still um, getting a little bit of mixture instead of a full white star with pigment on top but that's okay um, if you you could achieve the look you're going and see there you go you have the green star so I like the three different options that we have going on here um, and I'm just kind of spreading that around all over the page to have like different blobs so there you can see it's all dried and you can see the different types of coloring I have going on it's completely dry so I can do that I can flatten it out um, I rolled the paper up and now I'm gonna apply some splatter so um, I go through and I do a green splatter and I do a black splatter and then I decide my title um, that I use is blue. And so I go back in later and add a blue splatter just to bring that blue down into the mixed media background. So there's the Pink Fresh Studios, uh, what is it? Super Cool collection. And then I add that blue color in from another Pink Fresh Indigo Hills collection because I want it to match the title, which is You Rock there on that Chamel sheet. And so I'm trying to figure out, I want some ripped pages up at the top and I'm trying to figure out which three I want. Um, that icon page was just too much going on with the pink page too. So um, we're almost there. I like that green and boom, we're gonna do the green with the blue and then the, the pink where it has the guitars on it. So um, now I'm gonna rip up the pattern paper. So I'm just ripping a couple strips and I'm gonna rip the green one and there we have it. I'm gonna layer, layer them at the top of the page and then the mixed media stars are coming out um, below. So let's, um, I'm just doing one strip of tape at the top. It's super sticky AGT gun. And then we'll layer them up and put the pink on top. And then I think the, the green and then the blue. Yep. So these photos are of my seven year old Heath. He just started taking guitar lessons um, and he's he's killing it, man. I'm super proud of him. It kind of comes naturally for him and I love that. So I pulled out a bunch of the ephemera from the um, Super Cool collection. It was just so perfect. Um, and then with that corally color, I don't know what color to call that, I guess it's coral. Um, I, mat I had a paper in my stash so I matched my journaling strips on and mat matted them on that. And so, I really love how that brings out that color that's a in a lot of the ephemera. So there I have where I'm going to do it and then I'm going to build the ephemera up just to kind of embellish the, all around the page. So I picked out the pink pieces of the ephemera and the blue and green pieces out of the pack. That would also go with the theme of the journaling and the photos. 
So since you have gesso and since you have texture paste, I highly recommend gluing down everything. Um, so even though these are fine sticky on their own, when you're using those on the background, uh, that Nouveau glue is super perfect. I love it. I use it all the time. So everything I'm gluing down. I'm gluing down the um, ephemera pieces, all the journaling. I'm using that Nouveau glue. So now I'm just going through and I'm just kind of embellishing and, and dispersing my colors and clustering and... That's pretty much it. I'll add a couple uh, puffy stickers down at the bottom of that journaling and that's it. There's the final layouts. I really hope that you are inspired to go and use some texture paste. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. I'm on the blog today over at A Cherry on Top and I'm in the gallery and we'll have a thread in the message board. There's no excuse to not use your texture paste. It's so wonderful. You can even use a washcloth and a kitchen sink to clean it so you don't have to waste those precious paper towels. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.